Ah, with the old recording of didn't she sound like Siri? A little bit. Well, yeah, a little bit. Eh, she's a little condescending. <laughs> Hi, everybody. John Harris here on the Public John podcast, and I'm here with uh well, it would be another lie by a comedian if I said a close personal friend of mine. But we did. We, <laughs> we, well, <laughs> but every comic says that, you know, when they introduce another one. It um, is so true. <laughs> it is. Every, every a close personal do. friend of mine. And you find <laughs> out they, they don't even say your name right or something. For yeah. instance, I'm going to say that your name is Callie Ball. <laughs> is that correct? That is correct. Thank you for pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Woo! Man, there we go. Because Callie, I knew how to say it correctly because she's a close personal friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did see Callie. I did meet Callie a few weeks ago in Topeka at a Top City uh, comedy event, which was an open mic at the beautiful Happy Bassett Barrel House, um, and uh, uh, which was a lot of fun. Every couple of months, Top City has a, uh, in Topeka, Kansas, they have a, uh, uh, an open mic up there and uh it's a lot of fun um so we had a good time and Callie was there visiting uh through her job I think in the area and she's done yep. stuff comedy if I remember correctly and you popped in when you heard about it and uh you crushed some people it was great <laughs> I thought you were great so um before we get started, I'm going to let you guys know that the Public John podcast is brought to you by a friend of mine, Dennis Ingraldi at Vineland Realty Corporation. Uh, his office is located for you folks in New Jersey, in the South Jersey area at 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey. And their phone number is 856-690-9482. If you have any real estate needs, whether it's residential or business, uh, please give Dennis and his folks a call down there at Violin Realty Corporation. If they can't help you themselves, they also have resources that can get you the help you need. Uh, whether you want to rent, buy, sell, uh, rent out a business, or, or purchase a business uh, uh, building, uh, Dennis and the folks at Violin Realty Corporation can help you. Again, they're at 634 East Landis Avenue, and the phone number is 856-690-9482. And we thank Dennis because he supports all the Public John efforts, which there's a lot more than I want to keep doing. No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, pal. If you're listening, I'm sorry. And if you're not listening, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> you probably won't because you won't be listening. So I'm going to talk to Callie, who is, uh, are you in Peoria right now? Or in the yes, area. I'm in Peoria. All right. So Callie is from Peoria, Illinois. And and I know you probably get this question a lot. How about how far is that from Chicago? Um, it's about two and a half hours. Okay, that's not as far as I thought, but it's still a little ways. It's a little drive. Yeah, it's a ways because yeah. every time you say you're from Illinois, they Everybody automatically ask about Chicago. Chicago. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Peoria is uh is is a pretty big town isn't it yeah yeah i know i think it's heard of. maybe a little over a hundred thousand something like that okay so it's no slouch it's it's got some uh city elements to it i would guess yeah but it's a big town to me um i'm actually from a super small town uh i had like 28 people in my graduating class so wow. when I came here, I was like, this is the big city. Like, Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> wow. Callie, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I've been doing it around eight months. <laughs> okay. Really? So not well, too long. Uh, well, keep doing it. Because from what I saw and, and other people we talked to that night, the people that run Top City, everybody was like so impressed with you. You were great. Um so who, um, what made you want to start doing comedy? Uh, well, we have a comedy club here. And anytime I had people in town, I would always bring them there. Right. Uh, and I mean, I only went there, you know, maybe twice a year or something like that. Right. But then my dad got sick and I just started going there all the time. Um, I would either feel too much or not feel at all. Right. But there I was just happy and it felt good to feel that way. Oh, that's great. And yeah. 
and that's really what part of comedy the big part of comedy is to me is it's therapy yeah for, it is for the, for the comic and for the audience and like yes the perfect example you you got yourself out of the house and went here because you knew you'd feel better one way or the other that's great yeah and there's so many emotions involved mm -hmm. in comedy you know somebody will say something and it can trigger something and you yeah. start off low but then they leave you feeling high yeah yeah it, it really does get you kind of jacked up kind of pumped up i get i actually think endorphins kick in in my case when i get on air and um oh yeah for sure 100 you know, yeah your adrenaline gets going and you know um but it's not for the faint-hearted it's not for people who uh have had a lot of people even, even one of my brothers who i think is as funny as i am or funnier maybe because uh, i'm already <laughs> assuming that i'm funny and i shouldn't assume that but but uh he's pretty funny but he says um you got more balls than i got dude i can't get in front of people and, and say things because you've always been able to at least get in front of people and just i'm like yeah but now when you're an old ass like me you say what you think and people seem to think that's funny years ago if i said that same thing they'd be like oh you're an asshole <laughs> uh, now now it's like oh the poor guy <laughs> you know? i'll take it just laugh i don't give a shit so um who influenced you in in comedy do you know do you have a um during Ooh, COVID, push you into it if you have somebody that pushed you into doing it <laughs> uh, i pushed myself into it um okay that's great <laughs> but during covid i started watching emma wilman okay and she just brought me up um uh, and i actually got to do a guest set on a show that she did oh, yeah nice. at the comedy club here and it was just so exciting Oh gosh, yeah, it's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, I like Leslie Jones. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, cuz she's she is hysterical. She's so real. Yeah. Um, and that's, she's that's why she's so too. funny cuz she's just flat out funny. She's good. Out. And she uh, got the late start doing and getting well, I don't know about I know her. and she um has 40s, a speech think, about right? how it doesn't matter how old you get. Yeah. You can start whenever and be successful. Yeah. Well, funny is funny, no matter how old you are. Yeah. And she's kind of a pretty good example of that to me. I think she's hysterical. Um, yeah. And uh, some people stay funny. Some people don't. Some people, it fades away eventually or they lose interest in it. But she she's hysterical to me. Uh, but that's great. It, it, that, there are a couple of good influences right there. That's pretty good. Who do you oh, like? Yeah. Oh as a comic is there anybody that stands out that you think oh man that guy that girl they're really on it um as far as just all together yeah yeah anybody i really think leslie jones is always yeah. on it i mean you know we don't see them perform other places right. you know yeah exactly you can bomb at any level mm -hmm. but to me she's always on it yeah that's great well she's so high energy Yes, and I like an intense and I like comment. that. Yeah, and I like that. She's intense, yeah, and she's very high energy. So I do like that. Um, so where did you start? Was it in Peoria? Yep, it was in Peoria at a comedy club called Jukebox. Okay. Is yeah. It's a comedy club? Yeah, it's a comedy club. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of cool because it's, you know, one of... There's not very many comedy clubs anymore. Right. And, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, it's right in Peoria. So it was just super convenient to go and do open mics. Nice. Did you write material in the beginning or just go and try something? Um, <laughs> I had jotted some things down. Right. But, you know, you don't realize um, the intensity of how much you're going to be writing when yeah. you start comedy like you think you're just going to be able to go up there and be funny yeah. but Doesn't things are lost in way. translation uh yeah yeah uh i agree with you there my first time i didn't know i was going on stage no idea oh, really yeah i was in atlantic city which i was i lived in that area 
and I went in because I had it on my quote unquote, you know, the old cliche, the bucket list. It was something I always wanted to do to go try. And, you know, you, and you have it. Your friends always go, oh, my God, you're so funny. You should be on stage. You should do stand up comedy. Oh, you're so funny. So I forget why, but I was going through something and I went to uh, this comedy club and uh, just to sit there. And uh, uh, the owner comes up to me and he, he was meeting everybody because the place only holds about. 60 or 70 people it's a thursday night so it's probably only about 50 people in there um and he called what, what's your name blah blah, blah. And i gave him my name and i was kind of uh we both had a mutual friend let's put it that way and he uh, uh used to work with her and he goes oh you're the guy you're the guy and he's pointing at me you're the guy i've been waiting for you you're the guy and i went dude i don't even know you i just want to sit in the corner <laughs> and watch this and then I was going to take mental loads that someday I want to do that. No, you're the guy. You're going on stage tonight. You're going like, because if not, he goes, I got to, I got to call. Woman's name is Maria. I got to call her and tell her you're here. And he texted her and told her I was here. Next thing I know, I'm getting a text that says, you better go on stage. And I'm like, I'm not going on stage. No. Why didn't you tell me you were going? I said, because, you know, and she knew what was going on. So, so I finally did end up going, going up. Uh, nothing, nothing like you said prepared. I had nothing. Uh, he says, here, write down a couple ideas. And, and I said, I got no jokes. I got nothing. But it was an open mic. He had about 15 comics going on. Uh, everybody was getting five minutes or six minutes or something. Um, and I I eventually, right in the middle, get called. The guy that was supposed to go, that went on before the spot I was supposed to go to bombed. And rightfully so, it was terrible. But it was open mic. He was trying something. And the material yeah. had bombed. Uh, well, I feel like that always makes you feel a little bit better, especially going up your first time, like seeing well, other can, people bomb. His concern was um, the audience. He's like, they're dead now. He comes over to me and he goes, give me 10 minutes. Let me get the audience back in a good mood. Because he... As a, as a host, he's like, he's seen just the opposite, where an audience then can be just really hard to get to laugh after that, because they've lost interest. Um, so I didn't know any better. I trusted his judgment. And he was right. He got him back within a few minutes. The guy's a good mm -hmm. guy. He's funny as hell. Uh, his name's uh, Butch Bradley. If you ever get a chance, look him up. You'll see. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's He's got a residency in L.A. Comedy Club in Vegas, at the Stratosphere. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah, so he's pretty. He's pretty funny, uh, and uh, he got the audience back. And then earlier we were talking about, uh, uh, well, we when I brought you out about you're my close personal friend, right? Well, that's what he tells them. He gets on. I said because I have one rule: nobody knows it's my first time. I said I'll go up. But you can't tell anybody when you introduce me that it's my first time because I wanted to find out, am I going to get laughs or not? And if he tells them <laughs> it's my first time, you're either going to get a pity laugh or you're not going to get anything and they're going to judge you right away. And I'm like, I just want to know if they laugh. OK, if they don't, that's fine, too. But at least I know honestly. So he goes on stage and says, uh, close personal friend. We've worked together in Baltimore and D.C. and Boston and Philly. The guy is funny as hell, blah, blah, blah. And he's giving me this glowing introduction. And, of course, I'd never set foot on a comedy stage in my life. So I get up there and I just went into some thing I was making up about Warner Brothers cartoons being racist. And, you know, the black cats getting beat by the redneck woman and shit like that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. there's a pimp in the front row who heckled everybody same thing he just wanted to be involved like that woman you had in Topeka yeah um, and he was involving himself in everything and and I shot back at him with a with a gag and it was just like it went off the rails it, it didn't go off the rails it went great for me everybody including him was laughing in the end you know he was it's like oh you're saying it's a uh, uh, coyote uh, Wiley Coyote you're saying he's Puerto Rican and 
it just came out there. No, man, he's Mexican. Stupid. Oh, you idiot. Oh, you leave the house with that brain. Your mama let you leave the house without an education. It's Mexican. There's a difference. Dumbass. And just went off from there. And it got the whole crowd. Everybody was, you know, I was getting a few laughs before that too. So, so it was yeah. a great experience, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes not knowing what the hell you're going to do. It tests your reaction. Yeah. And you find out what am I made of? And if it goes well, you're like, okay, I, I like doing this. This is fun. But it definitely doesn't always go well. You know, no. <laughs> you, you <laughs> have to get used to bombing. You yes. really do. Yeah. Yeah. And the first couple of times you feel it's a rejection of you. Personally. Yeah. That's what you have to realize. Eh, they might not have liked my material, but I know either the material was okay and it was a bad night. The material's okay, but I didn't deliver it right. Or maybe I got to work on a couple things. But I know yeah. that the things I've done are funny. So I know it's something to work on. The first few times whenever I would bomb, mm -hmm. I would stay up all night ruminating about it. Mm -hmm. Um now I don't do that. And even the other night I bombed, it was like the wrong audience for my material. Yeah. And that but, can happen every so often too. You know, and it was an open mic. That's where you got to test it out. But they did not, it was a very conservative crowd. Ooh, um, yeah. yeah. A councilwoman was actually there. <laughs> you had a councilwoman. Yeah. Oh, and when so, you get a politician in the room, all bets are off. You can't. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just starting out. So my material's a little racy. I think that that's pretty common. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to get through those bits, like, because I, if I start, I'm going to finish. Uh, it was so Absolutely. you have to yeah you have to but that oh my god that's hysterical that's the woman in the audience. <laughs> it is i was apologizing to them and yeah that see, was that's, that's that was pretty part, funny <laughs> that part's probably funny i'm really sorry that you're you know and then i'd probably go that you're here <laughs> you um uh i don't have any other material so um we're gonna trudge forward I'm really sorry you're here. Yeah, yeah well, I had it. You're not going to be happy in about five minutes. <laughs> I had it wrote in over a month because I was traveling for work. That's right. And so what I do you do? Said, I'm sorry. Um, I work for a tech company. Right. That's what I thought. So you said, yeah. I travel around to manufacturing companies and uh, help get them started up. Okay. Because that's that's part of why you were in the Topeka area. That night if yeah I'm that's been perfect. really nice about my job is you know I get chances to do comedy in different places and you know like more diverse than Peoria yeah. and it's it's just nice to see if it hits with them yeah where have you had a favorite place to go to city-wise or favorite destination uh well my set um at the brewery that was pretty good that was good that was yeah, yeah. i was gonna say i hope that's up there on the list because that was a good one yeah, it really that was well. a good one um and i went to fayetteville north carolina right and i was that was like my first place that wasn't the comedy club that i did comedy okay and it was just a super nice venue there was like over 50 people there and i'm used to you know maybe like two to ten paying customers yeah we're all comics uh so <laughs> that's how it starts i've it, put rooms where the only people there were the staff yes, you gotta play the like, room you, know, you, you just gotta, gotta do it anyway waitresses, you gotta you know if they want you to still play the room you gotta play the room you know but yeah like for me i live for that reaction you know you just you just feed off of it um, but you know, there's over 50 people there and I did one bit and it was six and a half minutes long. <laughs> we had eight minutes there. <laughs> and eight minutes, all of a sudden you're like, oh crap. But they did eat it up and the reactions were good. That's so I great. felt more comfortable. Yeah, that's great when you have that reaction. And what I like about it doing it, especially the stand-up, I mean, 
I've written a couple things and and I'm going to try and put them out as skits and stuff like that. And, and I, I'm hoping they're funny. I think they are. But and I've had people tell me the one that they saw was funny or at least the idea of it. But to me, stand up is great because you get that immediate reaction. No matter whether yeah. it's good or bad, you know right away. Whereas yeah. something else you do, you know, you may not know right away. Like we filmed a couple people that were in that Topeka thing um, that you were at. Um, mm -hmm. We went on Fox, the local Fox station in Topeka and filmed something back in February. Oh, well, that's cool. You know, Pete, well, yeah, and it is cool. It was great to be invited. I was told I did okay. I didn't necessarily think so, but I was told, no, you were good. You were good. And there was like six or eight different comics and it's going to, but it hasn't been on yet. It was, oh, it hasn't? No, it was filmed How by long ago 43 was it? and it was in February. We're at the end of May. We were told March. I knew that was, I just know how the business works. I just know yeah. that's not going to happen. Um, but that's what you got to do is get out there and promote it. Right. And let people know about it. Yeah, that's the thing. But the problem is, as soon as you do that, they want to know, well, when's it going to be on? I got no idea. No idea. Um, yeah. And and but the 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 point there was, I don't have not just me, everybody that was on. We don't have that reaction. We don't have that immediate was it good? Was it bad? Was I okay? Was I not? Whatever. Uh, and I'm pretty critical listening or watching myself anyway. I can't really watch myself. I've found that. Yeah, out. it's cringy, oh. but it's necessary. Yeah, but it uh, is necessary. Sometimes I'll look away. If it's a video, I'll kind of look away and I'll just try to <laughs> listen. But watching myself, one of my friends, and she's right, I, is I've got, I found out I got, you got some physical manifestations on stage. Like apparently I always put my hand in my pocket. Yeah. Kind of looks like you got your hand in your pocket and you're playing with yourself. Well, I'm not. And I think people know that I'm not. Did and, somebody tell you that? Well, one of my real close friends, not, not, yeah. a, but she was there and she's like, it looks like you could be playing with yourself. You got your hand in your pocket. You look like a creep. Uh, I'm like, yeah. Uh, and and if it wasn't somebody else's old joke, I would have said, yeah, my mom didn't sew it when I got a hole in it. So I always have a toy to play with, you know, something. But I was like, ah, I'm not, you know, it's somebody else's old joke, so I'm not going to go there with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but it's like, you know, well, you know, I need something to do. I could change it to that. But uh, you got to, you know, when I'm on stage and they're not laughing and I'm bored, at least I can keep myself occupied. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's not. But. Yeah. So, I mean, we all have these. So it's hard for me to watch myself, but it it's, is, it's cringy. Yeah. Um, but listen, but it, you know, you realize, like for me, I realize how much I say, um, and like, and then also you can see what hits and yeah. try leaving those punches yeah. in there and adding on to it. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I think I have, well, I know I have one or two things on YouTube. One was not very good and the other one was one i won a contest and that one is on the video quality is bad but it was enough for yeah. me to hear and see when i watch it i see and still hear things that could have been shorter and more concise even though yeah it, even though some of it was playing with the audience quite a bit of yeah it. and that's the thing like with me i'm so wordy uh and trying to figure out how to condense that down and like i go on tangents <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know but i, I think know sometimes that that's too. a good thing one thing i found and and but i still break the rule on it occasionally but i've i've had uh one of the best uh, bits of criticism i ever got was when you listen to yourself uh see if you're giving the audience not an you're not giving them enough credit like sometimes you feel you got to explain a situation before you get to the joke well mm -hmm. most people are smart enough that you don't have to really go into a long flowery thing you know like i did this and this and this and blah, 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 blah. well that's taking time away from you being able to tell that next joke yeah so you're right when you watch and listen to yourself 
I know, I know I do like to listen only for the reasons you said. Um, can I hear the uhs and the as and yeah, and like, oh, does it sound like I'm stalling for time? Uh, I had one night I got to Topeka and everything I wanted to say was gone. And it was a show, it wasn't this thing. Like my whole oh, it was a show. It was a show. Never had that happen before. I've been doing this now about six or seven years. Take away a year for the pandemic, a year and a half, but even then I was doing pop, but gone like everything and i never had that happen before and i'm like i couldn't remember anything to the point of where i think even at a show i went to my phone or something just to try and get an idea and you know you're not supposed to do that and i never do that i practiced and practiced and practiced and had this one set all set gone and i was remembering some of the shit on the way home i was so pissed off and so did you have like a lot of anxiety or you just hadn't I didn't practiced. think I did, but it has to be what it is because I, I've done shows like in New York and Philly and all over the place, Dangerfields and Broadway. And you always have a little bit, but I was always, I always got through it and always had great, you know, pretty great nights. But I think it might've been because it was the first show I was going to do out here. You know, like it's a completely okay. different geographical area. Plus, oh, yeah. um, Plus, not having done it was the first thing I was doing after the pandemic. So everybody was off all that time. So it was really between first time out here and first time in probably a couple of years because of the pandemic, you know. So I guess it was just like whoosh, gone. And, yeah. And it was just like, that was like, I felt bad because that's one of the worst nights I had. And you've met Dan and Vicky and I went, I'm so sorry. There's just nothing there. I'm yeah really, you know and they were like honey you battled through it you still did your time you know they're really good out here about that they're really yeah. encouraging um where i've seen other places it's, uh, not so much. oh yeah it really depends on where you're at because some places say, have are you very run dark you've been to more, you've been to more places because of your job so yeah. have you run across that uh yeah for sure uh like when I went to Fayetteville, it was so welcoming and mm -hmm. positive. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've been other places. The other night, uh, I was in Kansas. I went to, I think it's called Murphy's Burl or Murphy. It might be. Murphy sounds familiar. Uh, and I did an open mic at 10 o'clock at night. And I, I didn't want to sign up right away because, you know, you, I never want to be the first one up. So right, by the time exactly. I'm up, yeah, you know, that's taking the bullet. Yes. And so I'm like, no bullet. way. Yep. I don't want to be first. Uh, so by the time I signed up, it was like I was number 22. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, by that time, that's the other end out, of it. it was two yeah. hours before I got up there. Ugh. And. You know, the room was packed to begin with, but by that time there was like maybe nine people in there. Yeah. Say. And I was exhausted and you know, I got some laughs, but it was like just not that same energy. Yeah, you don't have the energy and neither does the audience. Yeah. Let's face it. You know, it's sometimes a lot of times it's the audience that gives you your energy. Like you've got oh, to yeah. you're excited to it, get up there. But their reaction is really what gets your juices going. Well, and there were comics in there. And, you know, a lot of times when you go to open mics, you're worried about what you're getting ready to say, as opposed to the comedian performing. Because you're just, you have so much anxiety and you never know if it's going to hit at an open mic. Yeah, that's true. And you want it to hit. Because you're trying to find out, is it something I can use when I go forward? When I, when I go yeah. to a show, is this good enough for a show? And that's really what you're looking to do. And if you don't get a reaction at an open mic even, then you're, like you said, then you're questioning, is this good enough? Am I good enough? You know, I, yeah. I, I've I been going through it lately, just trying to say, I don't feel that, you know, like, eh. but it is what it is. You know, you, you um, but I, I, I see your point. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. You need that audience to get you there. And then when you're going 22nd, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, 
That's a way. Yeah, you're just exhausted by that. Yeah, um, you suck, and you could have went out, got a burger, had some fries, went on a date. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm 20 seconds, so uh, I didn't think I was going to make it back in time. I was on a date, and uh, the Uber didn't, guy didn't know the right address to drop me back off after I had signed up a couple hours ago. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I probably would have made a whole joke about that because, you know, I just, <laughs> that's me. I'm an idiot. Uh, it was awful. Um, thank it thank was God scary. her and I didn't like each other because, uh, um, I just had the driver drop me off and she went home. So, so it wasn't a good day. So I'm still here for you clowns. <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, you're uh, where, where did was now Fayetteville was good. Where did you yeah. have the worst experience? Do you remember? Um, I, it was probably at that open mic. It, that open well, mic? and I've had bad experiences um, right. at the club here. Oh, oh, in Peoria, yeah. <laughs> what? In Peoria? Yes, in Peoria. It, you know, home, I started right? out here. Um, and like when I first started, I bombed so many times. Like I would still get laughs. Right. Um, but I was just so nervous. Uh, the first time I performed, I was just shaking the whole time. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, it was it was terrible. But I mean, it was still exhilarating. And so the next few times I would sit on a, on a chair because I knew I would shake so much. Yeah. You were like, a, um, yeah. but one of my friends said, you got to get up. Gally. So yeah, you can't and, be sitting down all the time. You know? You're not. Yeah. And it's been great for like comedy. body language. Yeah. And body language is a lot more important than we give it credit for. Oh that's, yeah, for sure. Like, that's like when you were saying about watching the video. Yeah. I see that I pace a lot too. Oh, yeah. A lot. Like the one guy, I guess, running the camera for the one YouTube video. It's like you can tell he's struggling, I get, which was nice of him to do it. He did it on his own. I didn't ask him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, and my other friends were filming it, too. So I ended up choosing two. They both had the whole thing, which was like 12 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And pacing between the hand in my pocket and pacing. The one that I won, it's weird. I'm chewing gum. I had some people go, no, that's great. It gives you that attitude. And then I had others going, oh, man, when you chew gum up there on stage, you're so distracting. And it's so so that's the one thing to remember is, you know, you're going to have different opinions. Oh, some, yeah. Some of them are going to be valid. Some of them aren't. Um, when I watched the video, I thought chewing the gum worked for that particular night, at least. And for that set, which I guess it did work because I, I won the thing. So that was cool. But um but I think a lot of that was playing with the audience too. And it was part of that attitude. Like, mm, don't listen. You know, it was like all, oh. you know, but then there are others who would say, dude, chewing the gum, really? You know, you're like, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, okay. Um, which I didn't even realize I had gum in my mouth at the time. I didn't even, Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I didn't even know. Um, but you, but you're right. That physical manifestation of, of you on stage uh now when you got up on stage in Topeka you could see you were confident you seemed ready um and I don't know if I can do it justice if you want to tell me what you were thinking you had uh really a couple different examples if you think about it in one night in one like five or ten minute set you had a couple different examples of different types of either heckling or disturbance. One was the heckler that I was crying about before we went on that I didn't get to interact. And I'm so jealous of you for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, damn it. But but what what are you thinking when you get something like that? Uh it honestly just depends on the night. Um sometimes I just talk over them. Uh, sometimes it makes me get lost, but sometimes <laughs> I hit it and you, you hit it, it that night. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You hit it that day. Uh, and she, the same thing that we talked about earlier from the one in Atlantic city, she was heckling everybody. Yeah. Yeah. She was, and, uh, she, loud. Was super, she was very distracting for, yes. you know, the other yes. comics. It was yes. very difficult for them. Yes. And 
she'd had a few drinks, but she knew that because she came, the weird part is before you went on, she had done it with somebody and she came over to the table where we were all sitting and apologized and then went back where she was. And then you went on stage and she started the same thing again. I understand it's tough to get up there. Uh, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't take people, you know, and then you went up and she started all over again. And I was just like, but for yeah, me, she had I left for a wait. while. I can't wait. I'm in. going next. I'm going next. Oh, no, man. when she left, I was like, thank goodness. And then she came back in for my set. And it was, was fun. So, <laughs> I was so disappointed. I was glad for you, though, because you, you did you did knock that out of the park. But you had another thing that happens a lot in comedy clubs that same night, within a couple of minutes while you're on stage still, where in a lot of clubs, because there's alcohol being served and stuff and people are friends, they get loud and they can get too loud and distract the audience and even you. What, what are you thinking when you had a group of people that were on, as you were on stage, they were on your right, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Were together, men and women, but the guys were getting, the more they drank, the louder they were getting. And yeah. <laughs> they were. That was they, a good one. I, I felt like it was the perfect setup because I uh, had heard them all night. They just like weren't paying attention at all. Exactly. Um, and it, <laughs> I looked over at them and I said something that would uh, demasculize them. Yes. You emasculated <laughs> the hell out of them. You really. Yeah. Did. And it and, was empowering and it was great yeah. because they and shot And you didn't up. swear when you did it either. A lot of people go, oh, you fucking. Get you were just like. Calm. and it was it really the way you did it to me was was terrific because it looked like it could have been or should have been or part of the act that was the <laughs> great thing about it it looked so natural you didn't miss a beat and then when you're done with them and they shut up <laughs> they really did you picked right back up where you left off and it just seemed like a very smooth transition and that was very that was that was why I was like, this this girl's got it. She she does. She's got it. It's a matter um, of um that that was a very true. nice venue. I liked the vibe in there. Yes. The audience was great. They um, were. They were. There were a lot of females really there. Good there. They really are. That's really a good they come out for that. You know, where a lot of places that are a brewery or a microbrewery or a bar, they're coming out, they'll they'll say, okay, we'll come out, but they're also there to drink and be with their friends. Well, yeah, and you you play at a a small bar, and you always have the drunk, drunk yep. hecklers who, mm -hmm. you know, just want to talk. Right, right. Um, but those folks usually come because it's a comedy like that. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, friends. for sure. They, yeah, they definitely, you could they're, tell. They're basically there to see somebody be funny and make them laugh. And, you know, pretty much, I actually, everything pretty pretty much everybody had a decent night um but yeah, um i really liked that it was three males and three females yeah because yeah. there's so many times i go and i'll be the only female there or oh. you know one of two or three so yeah. it was the female presence was really nice now the night you were there with 22 were you the only female um no, there were other females, were there and others? they were good. They had That's a musical good. female who I really liked. Really? Yeah, which is hard to do, but there's some yeah. really talented ones out there. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, I think unless you have something else, you why don't you tell me first, because I heard about this, and then we talk a little bit about it. You're getting ready to be at least involved or start up with a with a production company out your way right in in peoria the peoria area uh, yeah me and some of my friends we started up a, a comedy production group uh, uh -huh. sucker punch comedy oh i like the name already yeah <laughs> yeah, right. yeah right. punch up not down when somebody uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get it going and get a social media thing make sure you hit me up on it i want to see what you guys oh do. yeah we have one oh. started up i'll send you the link for it that'd be great um, can't wait to see so that. we actually did um an interview on the a radio station up here we did the greg and dan show uh okay. so that was excited to kind of get the word out there uh-huh um hopefully we'll get some of the older generation uh 
we're hoping to get some spots, uh, you know, that have younger people, right. uh, because, you know, a lot of people don't even think about, you know, going to comedy anymore, stand up. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we want to get in some of the, we're playing, uh, now at pizza works in Peoria Heights. Okay. Uh, and that's a really nice venue because they're very progressive there. All right. uh, so that's nice. And you kind of get a mix of the young and old. Oh, that's good. That's great. Yeah. And that's what you um, and then go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, that's what you want. You want to have. Oh, a, yeah. We yeah, started an open mic. audience, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, And we're we're going to check out some other venues because we want to. We want to put on as many as we can so we can Ooh. showcase the talent here in Peoria because there are so many comedians here in Peoria. That's great. Um, and just yeah. not a, pla a lot of places that they're performing. I was going to ask, or do, do you have a lot of places? And I know you mentioned the one comedy club in uh, Peoria at Jukebox. So, yeah, and they're the main one. Okay. And, you know, we just want to give comedians, like, some people, some of my friends, they'll put on one here and there, but it's one person. Right. And that's so that's much to tough. take on for one person. Uh, so it's nice to have a team of people, yeah. uh, you know, so we can be tasked out and yeah, really do what we want to do and let people, you know, that have been practicing and showing up every time, let yeah. them do a set, you know? Yeah. And, and, it's good because you can all workshop together a little bit too. And um, if you're with a supportive group, um, you guys can bounce ideas off each other and things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do a writing group. Feedback. I'm sorry, go ahead. Say it again. No, I'm sorry, and get feedback. You know, you can get some decent Yeah, exactly. And you folks. can help yeah. condense your stories yeah. or expand on them. Absolutely. Uh, we do a writing group once a week, uh, but we're wanting, there's three or four of us, but mm -hmm. we're wanting to get more people involved that yeah. are with Sucker Punch Comedy, yeah. uh, which I feel like the Sucker Punch has brought us all closer as a community. Okay. Yeah. And I think something like that could do that. It sounds great. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. It's exciting. We yeah. really like it. It's good. There'll be some work involved, but the good part is if there's more than one of you, you've got a few people, you just can kind of... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I tried to produce a show by myself in February, mm -hmm. and I put so much work into it, and I mean, it is a lot of work. We were... Right. It was in a pole barn, and we were set, starting from scratch. So, an hour before the show, the fire marshal came and shut us down, and it was just so heartbreaking to me because um, I put so much work in So it. much work involved. Did they give you a reason? An official reason? Um, they said some things weren't up to standard. Um, uh, the building code and all that stuff? Yeah, and we were just like, can't you let it pass this one time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're not going. They weren't cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the people that had to enforce it weren't the people that made the decision, so... And you know, yeah, that. and you know, it's shows get canceled. It take, you know, it's something an that hour happened. before the show, though. Uh, yeah, that's you guys have to refund money and stuff like that. Um, we didn't have any people paying before the show. Okay, so you didn't. You didn't we go just do, and that's out. that's what we do at um our other shows. Is we okay. just do cash. Do it at the door. Yeah. Yeah, I've done, I've done and it's kind of nice. Uh, I used a couple when I was back east and was putting on shows. Um, I did. We were putting on a show. At least I was putting on something every two, three times a month. Easy. Um, I did have online stuff. It was good. It's good, but it's bad. You know, it 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 hurt me because when you said the fire marshal, we had a club in New Jersey. We we called it a club. We were there once a month every second or third Friday or something. I don't know. Um, special events kind of things too. And it was all comedy. And the first night we went, 
to use online tickets. Um, between that and people at the door, the room was only supposed to hold 55 people. And we had like 75 there. Oh, wow. And they were crammed in. And uh, the owner, of course, was mixed because a lot more food and drink. The deal was we got the ticket money. Of course, they sold all their food and drink. Uh, so they really made a killing, but the fire code was probably violated. So afterwards, and she happened to be there that night, which was unusual too. Uh, and, and she had this smile on her face and she goes, I really hate to say this. I really hate to do this, but we got to watch our attendance. We can't go over a certain amount. And, and I felt bad, but half of the tickets had been bought online. Mm-hmm. which was a lot more oh, than man. Was gonna happen. Yeah, that's a and then, of course, situation. a bunch of people came to the door, too, and it was like, you know, I mean, she was fine with it. Here's the weird part. She was fine with it when it happened. I mean, they're getting seats, and they're getting, you know, taking tables away and bringing in chairs so more people could be sit in the room. So, I mean, they were, they were on the fly. They were good about putting all these people in there. It was just well, afterwards. And you I don't blame her because it was also a second floor. It was going to be tough to get out of if anything happened. So, well, and it's hard. Like when that show got canceled, it's hard to, you know, tell people like, "Hey, I know you drove all this way." Yeah, yeah. Like a lady drove from like three hours away, and oh, you know, she was so excited to come. You know, because it's oh. a really, it was a different event. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, oh, it just breaks your heart. It, it really does. And I mean, don't get me wrong. People are yelling at you, too. But really, the people that are coming to see you are so disappointed. And that's the farthest thing from what you want to do when you're putting yeah, on a that's... comedy show is disappoint people. Oh, man, that's a shame. An hour before. My my problem with it was no matter what the reason. I I would be upset if, to wait an hour before the show to tell you when they knew for quite a while what well, i mean you're obviously publicizing it oh you're yeah we out there it. Like, um, you, you did all this work why couldn't they tell you a week before or two or three days before yeah exactly to wait to an hour before the show that it's just shitty it's yeah, really i was just gonna say it smacks of being really crappy somebody really wanted to stop this thing and they wanted to break your chops doing it because they yeah. know what's going to happen is you're going to have to explain this to everybody. That, that's yes, and it's, you know? and they knew it's that. Just, and it was like, sorry, yeah. you can't have the show. Okay, we're done. Goodbye. Good luck with this. And they drive I off. know when I posted, I had to share on Facebook, hey, the show's canceled an hour yeah. before. An hour before. Oh, <laughs> you oh. know, you have to post on social media about your failure. Right? Yeah, exactly. When you got to put it on social media that all this stuff we've been telling you for weeks, uh, we're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know we're only an hour away. We're 45 minutes away, but um, we were just told we're not going to do it. So, yeah. 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 Well, Callie, I wish you good luck with everything you're trying to do out there. But whatever you do with all this production stuff, don't forget to go on stage and have fun. Don't forget how you're starting this thing. All right. And why? Uh, because it's a lot of fun and, and you're great at it. You're, you're going to be as good as I think you want to be. So stick with it. Just remember, go on stage. Don't get lost too lost in the production part. And it's very easy to do. You worry, yeah. about, you worry about, did we make enough money to cover the bills? Or if you're paying comics, did we make enough here? And did we do this? Did we have a good crowd? Did the venue like us? Honestly, like right now it helps that there's three of us and yes. it feels good to be able to pay the comics for their yes. art. Yes. Yes, it does. You no, know, because that's not always the Your case. You know, people do sets all the time always... and get paid. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's true. And it happens a lot more than people think. So yeah. they paid less than they were supposed to. If you're based yeah. on how many people show up in the audience, it's like, well, we want to give you this, but yeah. and yeah. it's a bad rep to get too from the production end. You know, it's a tough <laughs> they won't play for you again. You know, I'm not going, and they'll tell other people. So that's a tough deal to go through. 
But my thing is, don't give up. They would say don't give up the day job is a cliche, but don't give up the stage yourself. Uh, you know, make sure you still take that notch, take that stage time, because you're funny as shit, girl. I'll tell you what. And you have that you have that thing where you don't look mean, you don't look like you're going to attack anybody, but people also know you're not going to take crap from them. Your state presence is great. So stay with that, uh, you know, because I, I think we'll hear more from you someday down the road. You know, just keep plugging away. Um, and I can't wait to see what Sucker Punch does. <laughs> yeah, me either. It's super exciting. It is. It's really great. So I'm going to let you go. Go enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Thanks a lot for your time. Callie Vall, right? Yeah. Right. Good job. I said it right twice. Woohoo. Somebody give me another drink. Uh, and uh, from Peoria, Illinois, we were glad to have her. I got to see her firsthand. And if you guys travel or if she travels and you ever see her name pop up, you got to take a, take some time and go see this young lady, because I'll tell you what, she's going to make you laugh. And that's all that we want. So thanks, Callie. Did I say all right. That? Thank you for having no. me on. Thank you. Have a great night and we will see you soon. I hope somewhere down the road.